Welcome back everybody to Pole Barn Garage where we are back with the Geranium Not Pink 59 Ford Galaxy 500. In that box, there's a new gas tank. In that box, there's shocks and front wheel cylinders. In this box, there's a master cylinder rebuild kit. In this box is a brand new, new old stock fuel pump from What the Rust on YouTube. I'm going to link them up in the corner. Check them out. They parted out at Old Auto Parts Store and it just happened to have the correct fuel pump for this car. So are we going to have a whole new fuel system, refresh suspension, and maybe even functional brakes? I doubt that. I suppose we'll start off with something easy and try to get the gas tank in this thing. So we'll remove our boat tank out of here. Whoa, I meant to do that. It was all on purpose. Let's see if I can drop this thing on my head. I'm pretty good at that. I could probably pull that off. <laughs> Did the original anti-rattle strip in it, which is uh, cloth in these. It's a wonder that didn't rot this thing out. Hell, I bought new fuel tank straps. Maybe I don't even need them. 30 bucks I ain't gonna get back. Whew, this thing's full of bad gas. If I was smart, I'd put a jack under it, but you guys know by now that, you know, what to expect. And, and, okay, straps are free. Ugh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ah, yeah. ah. <coughs> the tanks are very similar. The vents in the right spot. You can tell the bend of the fuel filler is different, but hopefully we can make that work with a little persuasion. However, the sending unit is different. Quite a bit different, in fact. I'm not sure what the original looks like. But I'm pretty sure I shouldn't be able to do this. Oh, hey. Well, there's the original one. Maybe we can clean this and reuse it? I have my doubts. I mean, at the very least, I guess it'll plug the hole. Yeah, after getting her out of the parts washer, what's the verdict here? It actually looks all right. Uh, we should probably check it out with an ohmmeter though. So I got my meter here, clamp my alligator clip to the body of the fuel sender. I'm gonna set us to check for resistance. I'm gonna make sure that it's got continuity to the body. Okay, I'm gonna touch right where the wire goes on from this fuel sending unit. My meter doesn't wanna read it, but it does have some kind of continuity here. Uh, probably need to clean everything up. I I think it might work. And if it doesn't work, well, it'll only be like the eighth or ninth one out here that doesn't have a functioning fuel gauge. So, yeah, whatever. Well, at least it came with the right gasket. Have a hard time to get that thing set in there. And there we go. Here's the sending unit. Now we're gonna have to make a new vent line for the side here. And uh, I guess we'll see if my new fuel tank straps even look correct. I mean, we, look, we know. We know how this is going to go, right? They're not going to work. In a turn of events that will surprise absolutely nobody, uh, these straps are, well, not even close. The bolts they came with work pretty good, so, you know, those are the most expensive bolts I've ever bought in my life. And we'll just reuse the 63-year-old original fuel tank straps, which are superior in every single way. Um, wow. Man, you just can't get anything anymore, can you? Uh, straps on here. Yep, yep. I think the tank is actually a little bit bigger. I gotta plug in the fuel sending in it, which is an exercise in futility if I've ever heard of one. Well, it fits, so I guess it's got that going for it. At least it's got a gas tank. Can you put gas in it though? That's a good question. Ah, uh, um, yeah, that's quality right there. Let's see if I can just persuade this to, you know, not suck so bad. Oh yeah, it bends real easy. That's not a good thing, but you know, we'll take it for our purposes. New fuel tank installed, line hooked back up. I found where the vent goes inside of the driver's quarter, hook that up. While I'm back here, I probably ought to go ahead and swap on the rear shocks that I got for it. So let's pull the wheels off and do that. For rear shocks, I have purchased the latest and greatest in rock auto technology. FCS Auto! These old spring assisted shocks have seen uh, better days to say the least. You know, I think they still have some life left in them. I don't know. I might want to keep them around. I don't want to jinx myself, but they're unbolting remarkably well. Frightening. 
it's an oldie and a not so goodie right there but because it has that spring on it probably still actually does something oh well we'll put these in here it'll ride a little better these shocks are about an inch shorter i guess we're gonna go low and slow now man one rock auto special installed and yeah, knock out the other one and we should be done back here well this one doesn't want to play nice out comes our friend mr sawsall I know I'm kind of putting off the hard stuff, but I'm going to go ahead and put the front shocks on this thing, you know, because it's easy. Probably do the fuel pump after the shocks. Oh, we also got a new set of tires to put on it. All right, I got that unbolted, actually. It's yet another pleasant surprise. I'm going to knock these out, and then let's dig into the hard stuff. Yeah, had spring-assisted shocks on the front, too. I don't know why. It doesn't seem like anything's wore out that bad in here, but... Hey, whatever. Ugh, frozen salt. That's why it drove weird. <laughs> yeah, I gotta say, for some chicken lao mein style shocks, these are uh, actually pretty nice feeling. Really well made, surprisingly. I actually don't know where they're made, but uh, they were like $10 a piece. So I'm gonna guess um, cheapest stand. Well, I will still ignore the brakes and let's change the fuel pump. This is a replacement fuel pump from the 1960s for this car. Now you might be like, well, why do you need that? Well, you see this on top here, that runs the windshield wipers in this car. This has vacuum windshield wipers and you can't buy these anymore. Uh, well, actually you can, but they're like $300. We're gonna pull off the old one. We're gonna keep the old one and I will come up with a rebuild kit for it someday, uh, but I, I just couldn't find one. These are totally rebuildable. You just unscrew them and take them apart, change the diaphragm in it, spring, and you're good to go. I just couldn't come up with one. Again, thanks to What the Rust on YouTube. I'll tell you right now, this is not going to be any fun to put back on. Very hard to get to the bolts on it. This would not be a particularly difficult job if the car didn't have optional power steering and all this stuff is right in the way. So I'm going to have to at least pull that power steering hose off, which thankfully just clamps on. And then maybe I get it out that way? I don't know. I may have to pull the pump. I ended up having to pull the power steering pump off to get this out and there's the original fuel pump with the glass sight bowl and filter built in what it was doing was bypassing out of the weep holes here because the diaphragm is bad it still worked yeah you know i'm pretty disappointed in that fuel pump you know only got 60 years out of it i mean they just don't make them like they used to you know what i mean i mean you know you can't even get a full century out of your car parts anymore damn New fuel pump is installed. Got to hook up our lines and, uh, you know, reuse the fuel filter because that's what you do. And uh, we should be in good shape here, I think. So let's put some new lines on it, put the power steering pump back on, and dig into the brakes. All right, we're all back and reassembled here. Fuel system is completely in place. Power steering pump's back on. Let's yank that master cylinder off and rebuild it properly this time. Zip the old master off of here real quick. You guys have seen me do this about, oh, I don't know, half a dozen times now, so I'll probably just glance right through this. Scored this rebuild kit off of eBay. Let's see if it's the right one. The guy was pretty confident that this would do her. Ah, yes. Yeah, that's <laughs> not exactly what you want to see. Yuck. And that. So here's your piston spring and the seal that's kind of the business end of things we'll clean this all back out but i had already honed it before in the last video and it feels just fine in there so that kind of sit there and drip and think about what it's done now there is another seal in there i think this thing in the very very end here i just sprayed that out seal actually fell right out kind of flying blind here guys i don't claim to be the smartest man or the best at anything i'm just out here winging it same as you guys do so don't uh don't judge me too hard here then we will install our new spring something like that put our new seal in our new piston in tension on her now put our washer back in in the back here it's definitely a snug fit to say the least. Damn it. At last! Now we'll bench bleed it again. Seems like it works though. Let's see what happens.
Ooh, actually it looks pretty good. I don't want to get too excited, but that seems like good pressure. Well, dare I say, I think that thing is actually functional. But I'm out of brake fluid, so i got to run into town and slap that back on. Check out the front brakes, see what happens. Master cylinder's back on. Hit the brakes a couple times. It already feels better. But let's check out the front brakes. Make sure those wheel cylinders look okay still. I think I get away without changing them, but let's see. You guys said that these springs go in this upper hole. Yeah, they were pretty tight on there. I think I put them in the wrong spot. Those springs are so tight. Not only was the master cylinder bad, but it was having to work like 10 times as hard just to push the brakes open. Throw it back on here, readjust the brake. I don't even know. I don't even know if I have to readjust the brake now, but let's see. Well, I cracked this bleeder. We're just gonna let her gravity bleed, I think. That's probably the best way to do it since I'm on my own. Let this one bleed for a while, then I'll move to that one. And no real reason to do that, I guess. I could just bleed this one, but we'll bleed them all rotate them and uh, well while it's doing this slowly but surely I'll go put some new tires on. Here's our new tires here. They're the cheapest ones I could get on eBay. I think I gave $298 for a set of four of those bad boys. Uh, there are 14 so they're gonna fit the factory wheels which are still laying over there in the pile of garbage. So let's go get those broke down and put new tires on. Here's one of the original wheels to the car. Every single one of these tires exploded in storage while it was sitting for like 25 years. Man, these are old. <laughs> really old. Jesus. Oh, kind of weird, but it looks like these wheels mount from the back side. That's why I was having such a hell of a time. I had to pull the tire off the back side of the wheel. I guess that's the way these work. I'm not sure. All four are mounted up, ready to rock. Obviously not balanced, but yeah, usually I have pretty good luck with that. We're gravity bleeding this one out still. Uh, the rest of them bled out pretty nicely, I think. Hopefully we have brakes. Let's throw some gas at her. See if it falls out the bottom. Beats a boat tank. So far, so good. And I went with the white walls. You know, I know you guys like the white letters on the Magnums, but that's just not the right look for these cars. This seemed to be done dripping. And the pedal don't feel half bad, so let's go ahead and throw this wheel back on. Yeah, before I put it on the ground, let's see if she'll pull some fuel and fire up for us. Oh yeah, yeah, she's pulling. She's pulling some fuel. She's happy now. I don't know if I might have a vacuum leak somewhere. I kind of hear a little bit of something. I don't know what that weird noise is. Weird noise is still there, but it runs better than it ever has. No, at least it runs decent. I hit the brakes a couple times. I feel kind of he. I think the booster might be bad. And if the booster's bad in this thing, it's under the dash. This is a power brake car, and maybe that might be that weird noise we're hearing is the diaphragm in it. So if it's bad, it's just gonna have to be bad. You might notice that that is a little four barrel on there, right? A little auto auto light four barrel on there. And uh, if you know these cars, then you know. That means that this is a police interceptor spec 300 horsepower 352. Uh, this is not your run of the mill 332 or two barrel 352. That's the big dog right there. This baby's kind of a uh, wolf in pink clothing. I might have to keep this thing now, man. Look at that look. 
Look at that. That thing is low. I mean, God, it's just sleek looking. Those freaking coil assist shocks were holding this thing up an inch. God, it looks so much better now. Will it stop? Does it have any fluid? Might be a good start. Yeah, pretty airy. I wonder if it just needs bled or, I don't know, it's about half low. Let's top it off anyway. Dump that in there for now. Yeah, our tail lights still aren't working. Fords are, of course, uh, hydraulically operated. Brake light switch. So we got 12 volts going in. At least the circuit's good. We can check for continuity on the switch. My meter hooked up there. We'll look for continuity when I hit the brakes. Who knows? Maybe it has two bad bolts. Oh, the switch is working. Okay. Well, that's good news. That didn't work before. Well, shit, do the lights work? I don't know what. Set my camera up back there just so I can look at the tail lights. Maybe they are working. Yeah, a whole lot of nothing. Hmm. We also have no driving lights. Well, let's check the bulbs to begin with. Check if the bulbs are good, obviously you can look, but also you can do a continuity test. Put one of your meter leads on the body of the bulb and the other one on the contact. And both filaments are, are good. That means we might not have any power back here. Let's verify that. Maybe it's just a ground issue. We'll have to do some diagnosis here. I made a little jumper to bypass the brake light switch for now. That way 12 volts will be delivered to the back of the car all the time. And now I can do some diagnostics. As you can see here, we have 12 volts being delivered through the wiring harness to the socket. So our problem is a ground. And these ground directly to the body of the car. Probably just need to clean this up a little bit maybe. I'm not sure. It doesn't look that bad, but I don't know. A little sandpaper in there. Let's see what happens. And there we go. All I did was just kind of clean up the socket here and give it a little pinch. Now, these things tend to get wore out and the bulb flops around in there. You got It has to be contacting the body of the bulb here to ground properly. Usually you just give them a little squeeze with some pliers and pretty good shape. That's hot. Ow. Incandescent. So, a little sandpaper in here. Let's just give it a little bit of a squeeze. Oh, that one broke. That's not good. It's all right. This one is so, man, this one's super brittle. I might have to see if I can find another one. It works. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> hmm. Well, maybe I'll get another bulb while I'm at it. Well, the only bulb I could find was an amber bulb, which, yeah, it'll be fine. Behind here. Never even notice. Right? Probably. Whatever. Anyway, uh, you can see that I've taped this socket in. That socket's trashed over here. So we're going to have to replace that eventually. But this should work for now so we can drive around and at least have brake lights. I just flip the key on and the fuel gauge moves. I don't know if that's five gallons or not, but it's something. I'll take it. Good morning. There's a swap meet about 30 minutes away. And I figured what better test than to drive this. I mean, the trunk is like the size of, well, actually, it's bigger than any modern pickup. Uh, this car is a more useful truck than any modern truck, actually. Be a good little test for it. She's a bit cold-blooded, but, you know, started up okay, and the brakes are better. I don't know. Let's see what happens. Definitely needs driven a little bit. I think that'll help a lot of these problems. Brakes are there. I may need to put those front wheel cylinders in it after all. Ooh, 
it is that. something at the front end or maybe one of the wheels is bent I put on here I don't know and the brakes are better but uh, I mean, they do stop but not like they should I think we need to put those front wheel cylinders in yeah, while I'm in town I'm gonna throw some gas in the thing and take her back home from 50 slam on the brakes not I mean it should be locking them up it's just not doing anything they don't pump up. There's no air in them. I don't know. They'll have returned. This wheel is definitely bent. See how it kicks out here at the top? It's tweaked out. So that was our vibration. That's good. That's no big deal. Uh, I looked inside the car. I didn't see any brake fluid running down the firewall. So I'm going to assume the master cylinder isn't leaking. But let's check the fluid. And... Yeah, full to the brim. Okay, so we haven't lost any fluid. And I definitely hit the brakes enough that we should have lost some. I'm gonna put front wheel cylinders in it just to rule them out. I do kind of question my bleeding, so I picked this thing up at Harbor Freight to vac them out. You know, the really fancy, fancy, fancy China Freight thing there. So peeking back under the dust boots, no fluid out of here, but I don't know. You know, unfortunately, the replacement wheel cylinder doesn't look like that one. I think the bore is smaller, but I guess I'll try them. I'm afraid we're creating more issues, but let's see what happens. I was re-examining these, and they are in pretty poor shape. I think this piston was stuck. Like, half of the pistons were stuck in here. You know, one out of two. My hopes are uh, higher than they were, so... Uh, they're about a one on a 100 scale anyway those are done also there's the replacement wheel there that's off of JD's car I think I don't remember got my fancy pants bleeder thing on here and basically it just sucks fluid through and bleeds it that way will it work I don't know well it's certainly doing something <laughs> well they're all bled and I don't know I mean feels all right It rebounds better. I don't know, man. Well, we're all back on the ground. Wheels back on. It looked straighter. I don't know, man. We're playing baseball without the ball or the bat or the field here, so. Will it run and drive to go get my Chinese takeout? <laughs> Surely it'll do that. At least it runs good. It had dash lights once upon a time. Right sword. Hmm. Oh god, the brakes are so much better. Oh, I think we fixed it. Maybe. I don't want to get it ahead of myself, but oh yeah, I didn't do that before. Well the wobble's pretty much gone. I do think the wheels need balance. Oh, the brakes work. Oh, we fixed it. We fixed it. Yes. That's not perfect. I mean, it needs an alignment. It needs the tires balanced. But uh, it's a, it's quite a bit better. I mean, the car is drivable now. And, and I would say relatively safe since the brakes seem to work now. I guess it was just those wheel cylinders the whole time. Uh, you know, I mean, you guys, if you guys work on cars, you know how this stuff goes. It's always something like that, right? Gonna enjoy driving this thing a little bit. I'm glad it's fixed. You know, I may not sell this thing. I don't know. Oh, the radio came on. I may not sell this thing. I don't know. Maybe I'm gonna see if Jess likes to drive it around now that it's halfway decent. Well, I've successfully made it to the Chinese restaurant. However, I think one of the shocks exploded. And yes, it did. Look at that. I know it's hard to see, but, uh, hmm. Yep. 
Maybe I shouldn't have cheaped out on those shocks. That makes sense why it was driving rather strange. Well, nothing to be done about it right now. We'll fix that later. The Chinese food has been deposited directly into my belly. There's your Chinese food update. Also, I'm gonna jack this thing up and try to bolt that shock in. I don't know, bolt nut or something. Uh, other than that, I'm very pleased with how this car drives. No, the bolts actually didn't fall out. It's the damn T here is too narrow for the control arm. Now we're getting away with it on the other side for whatever reason. I think my solution to that is just gonna be put a washer on the bolt and try that. Well, we'll see if it happens again. There, that's definitely fixed and we'll never have to revisit that ever again. Well, I'm out here tonight. I'm gonna try to put this dash cover back on, I guess. There's really nothing I can do with this. You guys think this glue's gonna come off, you're kidding yourself. It's hot enough that it's bubbled all the paint. Short of stripping that, priming, blocking, and then repainting that, there's not much we can do with it. I think I'm just gonna try to cover it with just the vinyl, and that's at least gonna look better than this. I've removed most of the trim here. Now I'm just gonna knock it all off with the scotch brake. I'm gonna try to heat some of this up with a heat gun just to make it a little more pliable. I'm gonna start playing with the foam. And I kind of realized that the foam is basically just stuck to the top of the dash to make it look wider, you know, more luxurious. I think there might be enough left of this to actually just put the foam back in there and it might look right. Kind of risky, but I think if we glue this to that tonight and then try to glue the whole thing on, worth a shot. I'd, otherwise, I was really struggling to get this to sit on there without breaking. After kind of massaging this thing with the heat gun a little bit, I don't know, a rough template, to say the least. So, like, is this going to turn out nice? No. But if we, you know, like our best case scenario here, hopefully it kind of turns out looking like a 63-year-old dash pad. And maybe it'll kind of look like it was never messed with. I'm going to heat this up so it gets nice and pliable and I've carefully designed this so that it's in two halves which should let us kind of bend it a little bit better uh, when the time comes. Anytime you use spray adhesive you got to spray both pieces that way the glue sticks to the glue. I'm manipulating this quite a bit and this old vinyl is quite fragile. If I was more talented I could of course just make a new one out of new vinyl but uh, you know just a regular guy. I don't have that level of talent. I'm sure there's some experts in there to be in the comments like, oh, I could have made seven of those. <laughs> yeah, whatever, man. Guess you should make a YouTube channel. Well, it ain't pretty, but it might end up being okay. Before this glue dries all the way up, I'll just stick this in here and give it a quick test fit. You're gonna need a little heat gun magic, but. I think I can make this work. We'll check it out tomorrow. Hey, hey, hey. we can make this work. Yeah, definitely. The only problem is this damn speaker grate. To pull this speaker grate, I gotta, I have to pull the radio out. I don't really wanna do that, you know. How are you gonna get the wrinkles out of it? Yeah, well, probably not gonna get all of them, but we'll heat gun some of them, you know. Mm-hmm. But I'll probably have to have you put the camera down and give me a hand. All right. Well, it's kind of ugly, but I think it's going to work. I mean, JD will put all the trim back in and see if we can't make it look a little bit better. And, well, it's better than it was. That is what it is. Lots of wrinkles and around the speaker hole, it's all tore up. It's just so brittle. It is better than it was. And if you look at it from the outside, you know, at least you look walk up on the car. This kind of looks like the original dash pad, which it is. Sometimes you just got to know when to call it and say, Good enough. You know, somebody else down the road, they can spend the big bucks and get that dash pad made. At least there's a template for them now. Or they can buy the reproduction ones for $800. Your call, but uh, I'm wiping my hands of it. Well, there's only one thing left to do. And that's to force her to drive it. Twist my arm. Which drive is it?
uh, two. drive two, I think. I haven't quite figured that out myself. Okay. That That's there? neutral. Okay. There, we go. there you go. There we go. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I haven't figured out what the multiple drives mean in this car. All right. Could be anything. Who knows? Oh, yeah. It's a boat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's a freaking yacht. That's why I wanted to see if you would like driving it before I throw it up for sale. There we go. Okay. Oh, it's nice knowing you, baby. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> survived dinner so uh, let's try to take it on the highway and see if we die you know there it might be better all right let's see how it does on the highway this is all part of my test to see do I keep it or make it someone else's problem just too nice for me to keep around. I'd have to rent a storage unit to put the thing in to preserve it, you know. And I think I'll just sell it to someone who can give it the attention it needs and, I don't know, continue to preserve it. At least we've done our job of putting it back on the road, putting a few miles under it. I'd say we've driven about 30 miles today. And it's done great, I mean, really. Mechanically, I'd say the car is pretty damn sound. Get up. It does exactly what it's supposed to do. The transmission, I just can't get used to how that thing feels. Do I want it D1, D2? I don't know. Who knows? But the brakes are holding up nice and they work good. Power steering's working fine. Everything we messed with was successful. Even the handling's not too bad. I'm checking to see if the 
pins are still centered and the leaves or the axles moving around causing that weird feeling. Really everything feels okay here except for that leaf spring on your side there looks a little wonky maybe? I don't know. The bushings definitely need replaced and it could be as simple as that. I don't know, never quite felt anything like that. I mean it recovers from it pretty quick but you know, it's strange. I think that leaf spring has moved though. Maybe it's got a broken leaf in it. I noticed the car kind of sits weird. And it did, and that corner of the car was in a ditch. Yeah. So, very possible that that's what it is. But, you know what? Honestly, I'd say you could probably drive the car home, and that's good enough for me to sell it. It didn't even leak anything. It's pretty good. Considering we never even touched anything. Yeah, we literally did nothing to it. <laughs> Not to the engine. And she's as good as ever. It runs great now after getting just driving and getting the cobs blown out of it a little bit, you know. Well, I think that's going to do it for this episode of Pole Barn Garage. Uh, you know, I don't think Jess needs this thing, and I don't need it. So we're going to throw it up for sale. I, mean, I got a buddy who wants it. I'm going to give him first dibs. But if he doesn't want it, you let me know. I probably want, I don't know, maybe 4500 for it. Um, so... Let me know. You can send me an email, pbgdaltongmail.com. Also, I have merch, good merch for sale now, shirtstampmerch.com. Check that out. Buy a t-shirt. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you guys next time on Pole Barn Garage. I think we'll be doing some interior work on the step side next, so stay tuned. Mm -hmm.